Okay, school dude Clem here. Not school dude Clem, it's cool dude Clem here. Anyway, just before I start the video, I thought I'd just bring this to your attention. There is another person on YouTube going about posing as me, posting vulgar comments. I'm sure some of you have already seen them, but um, for instance, there's one here that says that I've trashed those tubes that I got, and uh, well, I can assure you that I certainly have not, because they're all still here, perfectly intact. Uh, even got one on thing there, sort of like a little display piece. I'm not going to show some of the really vulgar comments he posted for obvious reasons, but if you get comments saying stuff like 90s rules, 70s, 50s and 60s are gay and stuff like that, well, yeah, just ignore them, because that is not me. Anyway, I have blocked this user. Anyway, on with the video. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. We're gonna have a bit of a long video today, so pause this video, get yourself some popcorn, make some coffee or whatever and come back because we're gonna be here for quite some time. Anyway, today I'm going to be making a vacuum tube Tesla coil. And everything that you can see in front of the camera, this is all gonna be used in making this Tesla coil. Everything that is except for this little valve right here because I just wanted to show you for comparison this is what I was using before, that didn't give us very much output in the previous Tesla coil videos. This is one I'm going to use in this one. If you remember this one had a little bit of a meltdown in the previous video, I just overloaded it and it arced inside and did all kinds of weird things. Well, you wouldn't think of it to look at it, I mean it does look alright, but of course, if the camera would actually focus on it, instead of focusing on what's in the background. It looks absolutely perfectly alright, but trust me, this thing is toast, so uh, can't use that anymore. Not a problem, though. The only thing that is a problem is that this valve here, or tube, or whatever you want to call it, is a, tr um, is a pentode, and the circuit I'm going to use has triodes in mind the circuit that I'm going to use. I think I can adapt this for a pentode anyway. So, um, well, let's go over some of the parts we've got here. Before we start with the most obvious part, the actual coil itself, which is this thing right here. It's just a cardboard tube, loads and loads and loads of turns of wire, which I've wrapped in plumber's tape to keep the, to keep the wire nice and safe. That is glued to this cardboard base here. This is the primary, it's about 20 turns of wire. And in the middle, here is the feedback coil, which is about 12 turns. And I can slide this up and down so I can adjust the magnetic coupling to be exactly how I need it. Now, this capacitor here, the tank capacitor for the primary coil, and what I'm going to use for that is this variable tuning capacitor. Now, the problem I have with this is that it will arc. I have had this thing arc before in some of the previous vacuum tube Tesla coil experiments. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of that on video, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to submerge, submerge this in oil, and hopefully it's going to stop it doing that. Next is the RF choke on the anode. It's just simply a 47 ohm resistor with some wire wrapped around it. For my grid leak, a 2.7k resistor and a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor. I managed to find some capacitors that can handle high enough voltage. And finally, a capacitor to protect the cathode, which is this little guy right here, 1 nanofarad. Now this transformer here is going to supply the anode voltage, about 270 volts. And these transformers here are going to power the cathode. I'm to use two because this does require 40 volts on the filament. And I don't have any transformers that can produce 40 volts, so 
just using the two back to back here to provide the voltage anyway that's all the boring stuff out the way now let's wire up this thing I've got the variable capacitor mounted in this used to be a plastic milk carton anyway I've glued this in place and I've got the calibration signal from my oscilloscope connected to one end of the variable capacitor and the other end is connected to the scope's input and we can see the waveform on the screen there it's kind of jumping about a bit for some reason it's not very easy to see on the camera if I just adjust the lighting here I can sort of see it better there for oh the camera would just focus of course for some reason on the camera it just looks fuzzy but in in real life that's sort of jumping up and down quite a bit and I think that's just picking up a little bit of 50 hertz hum but you should be able to see as I adjust this the waveform changes which you can expect anyway I'm going to leave it like that now I'm going to start pouring in some oil because I'm very curious as to how that's going to affect the capacitance of this thing if it even has any effect at all that is so I'm just going to pour this in and let's see what it does I want to make sure that's nice and covered well it doesn't seem to have had any effect on the capacitance but now there is less chance of this thing arcing actually I think it has made the capacitance general capacitance go up a little and it's made it a lot stiffer to turn anyway I'm just gonna let that soak in there so uh, we don't get any nasty air bubbles while waiting for that I'm gonna build the rest of the circuit Right, well, here's the coil part now put in, and I've connected the variable capacitor up to the primary coil, so we now have our tank circuit. Gonna have to put some kind of knob on the front of this, because when this is on, this is gonna be at quite a high voltage, and I don't really want to touch that, so, uh, gotta be careful there, don't really want to zap myself. And for the valve that I'm going to use, well, this is the, uh, valve. Does look like it's been used quite a bit, actually, but, um... This is a pentode, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the third grid to the cathode. The second grid I'm going to connect to the supply voltage through a resistor. And of course other, all the other connections I'm going to do like you saw in the circuit here. I will put up an updated version of that schematic, how I connected it up to this tube, at the end of this video. Looks rather messy now, doesn't it? But anyway, I've got lots of wires on here now. And I've colour-coded each of these wires so I know which one is. This white wire goes to the first grid. These red and black wires are for the filament. Make sure they're th thicker so they can carry the current. This black wire is the ground. Oh no, that isn't the ground wire, sorry. This is the black wire. I was confusing that with one of the red and black wires. This wire is for the ground, which connects to the cathode. And this yellow wire connects to grid 2. And I have wired grid 3 and cathode together, so I uh, don't have to worry about that. Now it's just a case of connecting everything up and hoping that it works. And it probably won't on my first go. I'll probably have the feedback the wrong way around or something like that. But um, we'll see what happens. So it's all plugged in and we are ready for first light. You know, I don't know if I dare plug this in. I've got a valve here ready to do its thing. I'm a little bit concerned about some of the resistors. I don't know how hot they're going to get. For instance, the grid leak resistor. I've just put a 2.7K resistor in there because I, I just pulled any old resistor out of my parts box. It's only a 5 watt resistor, so I don't know how hot that's going to get. Also, the resistor that connects the that connects the 270 volts to the second grid on the tube, I don't know if that's going to be a, okay. That's a 10k resistor that I've put in there. Put in a reasonably large one, so hopefully it's going to stay okay. I um, don't know what that wire's there. It's not even connected to anything. But a little pin on the tube itself, so we should see something if there's any breakout. I'm going to move the camera back because I daren't move put the camera too close to it just in case it damages my camera anyway I'm going to plug this in 
and see what it does. Okay, here we go. I'm plugging it in. Smoke or sparks await. Any minute now it should start doing something. You can already see the two filaments glowing, so that's uh, it's getting power. I'm not seeing any output though. Could just have my feedback the wrong way around, of course. Nothing is smoking, so that's a good sign. Ah, well, we do have oscillation. Not much oscillation, but we do have a little bit. Actually, there's a little bit of a thing at the end of that tube. I just think we need to make a little adjustment. Okay. Let's just see if we can... Need to adjust this some more. Well, the uh, tube is wire. Um, my fluorescent tube is wi lighting up wirelessly. All right, there we go. We do have something. Might just need a little bit to fine tune this a little bit, but we got a little sparkler. That's a good sign. That means everything is connected up properly and it's doing its thing. Now if I could just adjust this to get... Okay. That's about where the maximum spark length is. I'm just going to turn the lights out. I don't know how well you can see that, but we do get a little sparkler, so... There you can see it is producing a little streamer. And there's the valve. You can just about make out that glowing on the camera there. As well as a bit of corona leaking at the back there, which I'm not actually too worried about. Well, I couldn't leave without trying it on 760 volts DC. I'm going to say that uh, that transformer there just isn't capable of the uh, kind of power this circuit needs. Now I'm going to turn that off because this thing is does tend to make my laptop go haywire when it's running and uh, since my laptop is recording this, it makes recording this thing a little bit difficult. And here's the final design. I'm sorry about the picture being all flickery, I don't know what's causing that, but you can see it's still a relatively simple circuit. The only additional components that I've had to add to make this compatible with a pentode is this resistor here, and uh, then connect the other grid to the cathode, and it works absolutely fine. I have tried tinkering around with these two resistors here, changing their values and uh, changing the amount of primary turns on the primary to see if I can get any better output, but... No noticeable difference, if any. So I think to get this more power out of this, what I'm going to do, and that's going to be in another video, change this transformer. What do you think? Should I go with a microwave oven transformer? Ballaston, of course. Yeah, I think we'll do that and see what we get. Of course, that does mean I will have to increase these two resistors here, but... Yeah, give that a go and see if it works. But anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.